who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went his way and sold all that he had and bought it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now this one pearl of great price is, of course, our Catholic faith. There's only one faith, one baptism, one Lord, one church. So today, let's reflect on some of the virgin martyrs who've given their lives on this very day for this one pearl of great price. They gave everything for this one pearl. And of course, we have today uh, St. Christina, which the Mass is in honor of. She was martyred around the year 300. She was 10 years old when she broke up her father's idols of silver and gold and gave the silver and gold to the poor. And her own father had her cruelly martyred. Her own father. We can also recall Rachel of the Old Testament, the wife of Jacob. She took her life in her hands by taking her father's idols. Her father Laban. And he came after them, looking for them, and she sat on them, desecrating them in her womanly cycle. It's a sign that she certainly was not an idol worshiper. Now, what does this say about our modern notion of religious liberty? Did her father have a right to worship idols? Was Christina the 10-year-old daughter violating the rights of her father, did she do well in breaking up the idols? Did she die well? What about the ridiculing and condemning of all idols in the scriptures? Is this proper? After all, these people would seem, according to modern notion of religious liberty, to have a right to worship in this manner. St. Paul echoes the Old Testament in his book to the, his letter to the Hebrews when he wrote that all the gods of the pagans are demons. Now, do the demons have rights? Absolutely not. So, Christina did die well, and we do well in honoring her, her heroic acts all these centuries since she died. Once again, she died around the year 300, and we are still honoring her to this day in the Mass. That says something. There are three more virgin martyrs I would like to reflect on a little more today. They were the first fruits of the Spanish Revolution, and they died on this day in 1936. Spanish Revolution. The communist troops murdered three Carmelite nuns called the Guadalajara Martyrs. They were Blessed Maria of the Angels of St. Joseph. She was 31 years old. Then there was Blessed Maria Pilar of St. Francis Borgia. She was 58. And there was Blessed Teresa of the Child Jesus. She was 27. So in the year 1937, Pope Pius XI, he promoted or promulgated a document on communism explaining how it works and the evils it causes in the world. Now, in this document, he makes special mention of Spain, Spain's fight against communism. So let's take a few moments to reflect on his words, because they explain for what purpose these Carmelites died. First, his words about Spain. Here are the words of our Holy Father, Pope Pius XI, of happy memory. Even where the scourge of communism has not yet had enough time, to exercise to the full its logic effects, as witness our beloved Spain, it has, alas, found compensation in the fiercer violence of its attack. So in other words, it may not be in every heart and mind in Spain, but they're going to come down with a great violence anyway. Not only this or that church or isolated monastery was sacked, But as far as possible, every church and every monastery was destroyed by the communists. Every vestige of the Christian religion was eradicated, even though intimately linked with the rarest monuments of art and science. The fury of communism has not confined itself to the indiscriminate slaughter of bishops, of thousands of priests and religious of both sexes, 
It searches out above all those who have been devoting their lives to the welfare of the working classes and the poor. But the majority of its victims have been laymen of all conditions and classes. Even up to the present moment, masses of them are slain almost daily for no other offense than the fact that they are good Christians or at least opposed to atheistic communism. And this fearful destruction has been carried out with a hatred and a savage barbarity one would not have believed possible in our age. Now here's a key line. No man of good sense, nor any statesman, conscious of his responsibility, can fail to shudder at the thought of what is happening today in Spain. May perhaps be repeated tomorrow in other civilized countries. Thank you, Pope Pius XI. Now, That's pretty serious. In other words, he recognized this is going to happen over and over and over if we don't put an end to it. And it did happen over and over and over. Now let's consider a few things communism promotes because they're all around us. Although they have entered our country perhaps in a more smiley face fashion and more of us with quotes around it, peaceful manner. Well, here are a few to consider. Pope Pius XI points out that communism is seeking an earthly material paradise, denying altogether that there is an afterlife or even a spiritual life for that matter. What was that song by John Lennon? Imagine there is no heaven. It's easy to do if you try. That's communism. Now this is why Pope Pius calls communism atheistic and materialistic. So how is the paradise attained? Well, it's attained through class struggle. Here are his words. In such a doctrine as is evident, there is no room for the idea of God. There's no difference between matter and spirit, between soul and body. There is neither survival of the soul after death, nor any hope in a future life. Insisting on this dialectical aspect of their materialism, the communists claim that the conflict which carries the world towards its final synthesis can be accelerated by man. Okay, let's stop right there. It can be accelerated, this dialectical thing. What's that? Dialectic means you have a thesis, you have an antithesis, and they fight it out, and you get a synthesis. Okay, so I have these border guards down there in America. That's the thesis. And then I've got these guys on the other side of the border that are drug runners and lords of all kinds of... uh, of, of drug lords of all kinds. And I give them some guns, see? And so they fight it out, And the whole world gets to know about it. Now we have a synthesis. We can get rid of certain guns. You see that? This is communism. It's right in our presence. Uh, A shooting happens at a movie theater. Now we'll have a a, a situation on the other side to kind of fight it. And there'll be kind of a, a synthesis. We'll have to outlaw certain more things. And these kind of struggles are going on in our very midst. This is communism. Pope Pius goes on. Hence, they endeavor to sharpen the antagonisms which arise between the various classes of society. Thus, the class struggle with its consequent violent hate and destruction takes on the aspects of a crusade for the progress of humanity. On the other hand, all other forces, whatever, as long as they resist such systematic violence, must be annihilated as hostile to the human race. Let's repeat that. All other forces, as long as they resist such systematic violence, must be annihilated as hostile to the human race. Thank you, Pope Pius. What is, what, what, what's the force in the world that's opposed to this? That's the Catholic Church. What's he saying? they will seek to annihilate us. It's kind of scary coming from the pen of the Holy Father. And it's true. Now, the question is, is how are they going to do it? Right now they're doing it with the smiley face method. Very dangerous. Infiltrating and getting us to give up our doctrines and our faith that one pearl of great price. So communism wants class struggle or even struggle between the sexes, husbands and wives, struggles between bishops and their priests, bishops and the Pope, priests and the people, 
He wants a thesis, antithesis, synthesis. He wants people to be pitted against each other. Let's look at a few more errors. It consists on absolute equality, flattening all hierarchy. Pope Pius, he says, in man's relations with other individuals besides, communism holds the principle of absolute equality, rejecting all hierarchy and divinely constituted authority, including the authority of parents. End quote. Flattening of hierarchy. Pope Pius says another error. It lays the ground for divorce on demand. Here's what he says. Refusing to human life any sacred or spiritual character, such a doctrine logically makes of marriage and the family a purely artificial and civil institution. There exists no matrimonial bond of a juridical moral nature that is not subject to the whim of the individual or of the collectivity. Naturally, therefore, the notion of an indissoluble marriage tie is scouted. And we could add to Pope Pius the idea of a natural marriage between a husband and a, or a woman and a man is also scouted. Now we've got all kinds of weird, perverted ideas. Another error. Liberation of women, especially mothers. Here's what he says, Pope Pius. Communism is particularly characterized by the rejection of any link that binds woman to the family and the home. And her emancipation is proclaimed as a basic principle. She is withdrawn from the family and the care of her children to be thrust instead into public life and collective production under the same conditions as man. The care of home and children then devote, devolves upon the collectivity, upon the state. Pope Pius. Take the women, take the mothers out of the home. Make them equal to men. Make them do the same works under the same conditions. Another error. Takes parents' rights away to raise and educate their children. Here's what he says. Finally, the right of education is denied to parents. For it is conceived as the exclusive prerogative of the community in whose name and by whose mandate alone parents may exercise this right. Thank you, Pope Pius. So Pope Pius has made it clear their intention was to uproot the Catholic faith in the family and in the children. He also made it clear that these errors were emanating from Moscow, Russia. In that encyclical. Our Lady warned us at Fatima that Russia would spread her errors, and she has. This is what today's Carmelite martyrs died to stop from taking place in their homeland of Spain. They died recognizing the rights of Christ in our lives, not just our private lives. They died for the right of Christ in the whole country. They died crying out, Viva Cristo Rey. The youngest of them died out with those on her lips, Viva Cristo Rey. Which basically is saying, God lives, He is King, there is a kingdom, there is a hierarchy, and there is eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.